<laughs> I had made a decision as a young forester that I was not going to do research on Douglas fir. Everybody knew everything about Douglas fir already. It was a hugely studied species. I wasn't going to have anything to do with Douglas fir. I was going to go up in the subalpine forest. And uh, guess what? It turned out we didn't know shit. A lot of people had done a lot of work, but they hadn't done a bit on what a Douglas fir ecosystem really was. But we did it. And uh, so I've spent my whole life now working with Douglas fir, on Douglas fir, and the ecosystems of which it's a part. And uh, I have the deepest regard for the Douglas fir tree. God bless and take care of it. This is not a forest. It's a plantation. And plantations were designed with a goal in mind of producing wood. And as a consequence, many attributes of a forest ecosystem are completely lacking. We simplified these forests, or we densified these forests, and so we have forests that are very even-aged, even-sized, even in terms of their structure, very simple. And when you realize that the vast majority of the forests of the Douglas fir region have been harvested and are going to be managed in some way, the question is, how do you want them managed? Because they're now in the hands of investment groups. They manage their lands on short rotations with intense use of herbicides and cut the Douglas fir right when it's just beginning to grow well. We're not even trying to maximize wood production anymore. We're trying, in fact, to maximize capital return for a very small group of investors. But we end up with forests that have high vulnerability to fire and high vulnerability to climate change. And they don't even begin to realize the productive capabilities of these forested sites, which are among the most productive of the world. And we're cutting Douglas fir off at the ankle? What in the hell are you doing? Ultimately, this is not a forest. This is, in fact, a farm for growing wood. Now this is a forest. I'm looking at that incredible Douglas fir tree there. Monster. Big epicorbic branch system. Holy smokes. <laughs> In the old days, it was suggested that old growth forests were actually biological deserts, that they didn't serve any kind of useful functions. But in fact, uh, they serve extraordinary functions in terms of the atmosphere, in terms of the hydrologic cycle, in terms of wildlife habitat. The carbon stocks here are just far in excess of those you would find in a tropical rainforest. And if you were to cut them, you would end up releasing the vast majority of that carbon to the atmosphere. So the best thing that you can do is leave them intact. One of the reasons these forests work so well is nature isn't trying to maximize anything. And therefore, it's capable of fulfilling in very excellent ways all of those functions. And from these kinds of forest systems, we can take lessons and begin to restore integrity, completeness to the managed forest in such a way as to be of mutual benefit to both that forest system and to our society. That's called ecological forest management. This is a big harvest unit that goes down the slope and what they were trying to do was emulate the fire regime of this area as they understood it. And so they left all old trees. 
they did the bulk of their retention in the form of the aggregate, and then they ran fire through the whole thing in order to produce snags and downed wood. And it's a, a good approximation of what I do, except I would never ever harvest in a stand of this age. This was a naturally regenerated, mature forest. But anyway, uh, they left uh, a lot of trees. Retention is about continuity from the previous generation to the next generation of forest. You open it up for the early succession and you open it up for the development of the shade intolerance like Douglas fir but you leave significant dispersed retention. And often I talk about 10% in the harvested portion of the unit. And then you got 30% in aggregate. So we're talking about 30 to 40% total retention. Uh, in addition, very limited or no use whatsoever of herbicides. And a heavy dependence on natural regeneration. You're trying to regenerate a mixed forest not simply Douglas fir, but other species as well, which add a great deal in terms of diversity and resilience to things like wildfire. But from a human perspective, trying to travel through it, it really seems like a chaotic environment. But from an ecological point of view, it's not messy so much as it's complex. It's rich in niches. We want that period when we've got all of these good shrubs developing, all the berries and the nuts and the fruits being produced. You know, it's got all kinds of stuff to eat. And because it has all kinds of stuff to eat, all kinds of stuff comes to eat. But now it's about 25 years later. Boy, oh boy, the trees are taking over. That's about what happens now. Finally, of course, they're using a longer rotation here, typically of 80 to 120 years in this forest. One of the things we've learned is that the plantations have uh, immense impacts on water yields and use much more water than a natural forest system does. With things like longer rotations, you're going to get uh, higher quality water. But we're also talking about forests that are structurally diverse. And it's the large structures that are going to be so important in providing resistance and resilience. So what we're seeing here is diversity of both species and diversity in terms of the structural complexity of this system. So it's not going to be a simple system. Uh, this next generation of forest is going to have this legacy from the original forest that was here. Uh, so uh, in the case of ecological forestry, what we want to do, hello butterfly. <laughs> We're really seeking to, of course, restore forest, manage forest to uh, completeness, to restore their integrity. And ecological forestry allows us to manage simultaneously for the environment and the economy. I'm so positive about the future because, first of all, I've seen the changes that we've made. We changed our direction completely with regards to the remaining old growth forest. And if nothing else, it's because we do understand today what a forest ecosystem is. So hopefully with knowledge comes some humility. And I think society is prepared for that.